Today I'm going to tie a little yellow stonefly nymph. Uh, this one has a few more steps. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to tie, but none of the techniques are terribly difficult. It's a good pattern to have. This one's designed skinny, so it sinks more from being slender than from having a lot of weight on it, but you could, of course, put some weight on it. This is a uh, Diariki 700, size 12. Uh, 285 or 200R. There's a lot of hooks that would be good for this one. What I'm going to do is tie with yellow thread, 140 denier, because it's going to show through some of the vinyl ribbing. I'm just going to make a small little ball back there and use it to help separate my biots. And I'm going to use the biots down here from the tip with a stripped quill because they'll be a little more slender and pointy. And what I'm going to do is get them side by side, just kind of lay them in place and just with gradual thread pressure get them separated on each side and then work my thread back against the ball. That will give me a good divide on the biots. Now I'm going to move forward the proportions on this thing are about 50-50 with the abdomen and thorax, but I'm going to build my abdomen past the midpoint so that when I <coughs> tie the thorax on I can overlap and have a nice clean seam. Now I've got some D-rib. This one is yellow. It is nymph size. Nymph size. UTC. And I'm going to tie it back along the side until I get pretty close to those forked tails and I may need to make a few extra turns to keep this thing even. Now if I swing this vinyl D-rib forward I can get the round side out. And I haven't Intentionally, I haven't built any taper into this. I want the abdomen on this one to be pretty straight. And if the tips of your scissors are sharp, you can get in there and give it a cut. Now here is one of my little tricks. I'm going to get a brown sharpie and color the top. So at this point, I'm dark on top, light on the bottom, but I'm going to take one more step and kind of wipe it. Now I'm brown along the sides, and I've got that ink that sinks down into the crevices and gives me some segmentation. Now I'm going to put a little bit of hydro on it so that ink can't wear off. Try not to build anything up. I just want this to be nice and thin and cover. Hit it with a lamp for a second or two. Now I can proceed. I'm going to use thin skin, and it's fairly narrow for this stonefly. I just make it barely bigger than the diameter of your abdomen. Now I'm actually going to jump up and tie above that D-rib so that I get to my 50-50 proportion. For dubbing, you can use any yellow dubbing. These things change color from the time they molt to the time they mature and are ready for the next molt. <coughs> this one is, I think it's Stonefly Yellow Life Cycle. I'm going to fill this in with kind of a light coat of dubbing.
and then when I get back to the middle, I'm going to build it up a little bit. <clears throat> Let's get that out of the way. Fold my wing case over, make a couple of turns, then I'm going to stroke it to the back and jump right up on top of it. Now that's going to be the point at which I tie in the legs. And you can use rubber legs. I'm going to use silly legs. And this is the nymph size. These are a little finer. And just gently tie one in on the near side and kind of get the front legs to length I like. And cut the rear legs a little longer than the body length. I can always trim this a little later. Reach across to the far side. Now I'm not tying very tightly because this these silly legs are a little bit fragile. And I want to be able to tug them and that's hard to do if they're tied in too tightly. Now the only real important thing here is to keep some room in between the front legs and the bead. I'm going to fill in my dubbing and then get a few turns in front. And I've rebuilt the taper for the thorax and now I can fold this one over ready for a whip finish. And a trim. There you go. It's fairly quick. Seven minutes. Nice little stone flight.